Hi everyone, and welcome to my video review of the Garmin eTrex 10. It's a GPS unit that I've owned for nearly a year now, and I've used it a fair bit in that time, just walking, a bit of running, things like that. And I'll just go over some of the features and what I like and what I don't like about it. Um, so I can see this is the unit itself. It has a joystick at the top here, up, down, left, right, and push it in to select. You've got a back button and a on button on the side. And on this side you've got two directional arrows and a menu button. Around the edge is a tough rubberized coating um, and a small attachment point for a lanyard at the bottom. This is the back, you can see if we pull this little metal clip up and twist it, it pulls the battery case off. You see, as you can see it takes two AA batteries. So that little metal clip actually makes a watertight seal as this is waterproof, this unit. Um, under this little cover is a, just a USB point for connecting it to your computer for uploading and downloading tracks and routes and things like that. So we press the on button on this side here, turn on. And okay, so this is the main menu, um, which you'll get every time you turn the unit on. And if we press map, as it's talk you through so as you can see it is a black and white base map you can't upload sort of OS style maps onto the unit um, what you can what you do instead is you use computer software with sort of OS mapping to create routes and download them onto your unit and go from there so if you see you can also add waypoints you can see here these little flags are waypoints that I have added um, while I've been going around they're actually the tops of hills and they give you the coordinates if you click on them elevation distance from where I am now the when I first marked it and the grid reference. So you see the little arrow moving about um, and if you see this top bar there that will tell you the location, the grid reference of where the arrow is positioned, the distance from yourself and the direction from yourself. And down at the bottom is a scale which will go down to sort of that distance as 5 meters. So, So go down to five meters. It's fairly detailed. And zoom out again. Here we go. Okay. So click menu. Lost satellite position. That's not good. If you want to measure distance, so if you click menu, this button on the side here, bring up this menu, and you can measure distance literally draw from one point to the other and it'll tell you distance um, you click setup map you can change the orientation and yeah various colors various options there so if I click where to I can either choose a waypoint a track I can input some coordinates where I want to go to and or a city so if I click a waypoint, we click around a beak, it and I click go, it will tell me in a straight line the distance and direction to that waypoint. So if I click compass, this the compass will only work when you're moving. Um, so it'll tell you which direction you're moving in. It won't be able to tell you which direction you're facing. Tell you the speed you're traveling at, the distance to the next um, waypoint. So if you put in, you want to travel to a certain place, it will tell you the distance to it, um, the estimated time it thinks it will take you to get to that point, and the time to the, the next. Um, just to count down to the next point. To mark waypoint, you just click on to mark waypoint. You can change the name there. Change the name, add a note to it, 
um, and that will tell you the grid reference and the elevation. So if you click onto Trip Computer, um, this will tell you your elevation, how long you've been walking for, the speed you're traveling at. It's all wrong. By the way, I'm not traveling at 26 kilometers an hour. Uh, the max speed you've traveled since you started recording, the time you've been moving for, the average moving speed, the overall average of speed, and the stopped time of speed. And it will also tell you the top sunset in 5 hours and 27 minutes. So you click on the menu button here. You could, if you reset that, it will put them back to zero and it'll start recording again. And one of the features I don't like about this unit is that you can't start and stop recording your route is as soon as you turn it on it starts recording and as soon as you turn it off it stops so that's a little feature I would have liked to have but it doesn't have it um, click big numbers it'll make it bigger if you change data fields you can choose what to have on there go back to small numbers so you can choose if you don't want certain things on there you want different things you can change that change the dashboard and there we go you can change it to what it looks like and it'll restore default to reset it so if we go to setup system just things like what batteries are using USB mode what satellite so see GPS and GLONASS that means it's using American and Russian satellites which is more accurate than just GPS there and let's see display I'll change that so it doesn't keep going off can adjust the contrast tracks map this is map settings which reset page sequence so if you, what you can do here is you can add a page, so I could say main menu to map and every time I press one of these arrows here it will just flick through the pages directly so you don't need to find them on the menu. Uh, units, you can change units, metric, imperial, etc. The time, change the time. Position format here you can change it to ordnance survey it also has um, various different formats and then okay so that's all the settings there